Hey everybody, um, I'm gonna try something different and hopefully pretty cool with today's video. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try and almost pay a code with you. So I'm gonna take on one of the problems I've given you guys in the labs and I'm gonna go through the process of how I would solve it. The problem I'm gonna pick in this uh, video is the OKHTTP OK lab that you guys had to do. So basically what I wanna do is I wanna connect to some website, download the content, and just display it on the screen, okay? Now, as with any app, the first thing I'm gonna do is think about what user interaction um, is necessary. So, you know, do I need edit texts? Do I need buttons? Do I need, you know, labels? What do I need there to be on the screen? Now, this app is quite a simple app. It's just got one function. So all I need the user to do is to trigger that function. Right, I just need the user to say, okay, go get me the website. So that means on the screen, what I'm gonna need is a button. Okay, so I've made a empty activity, and so I've got the activity, I've got the layout. Now, if I'm working in Android Studio, I can just go to this activity main.xml and put a button in there. But um, a lot of people may be using the Android alternative that I posted uh, last week, and so they won't have access to these XML files. It doesn't support this sort of XML-based layout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to code this directly using Java, and that'll mean that people using Android alternative will be able to follow along. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create a layout in which I'm going to put all my components. For simplicity, I'm going to use a linear layout, and all that does is it lays out the components uh, sequentially. So either one um, under another or one to the right of the other, you know, so it's, it's either horizontal or vertical. Um, and in this case, I want it to be vertical. So I'm going to make a vertical linear layout. In that vertical layout, I'm going to put a button. And I don't really care what the text, okay, I have to alt enter to import it. I don't really care what the text on that button is going to be. So for now, I'm just going to make it okay. And I don't care. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, set uh, content view to be L so that that's the layout that appears on the screen. And to L, I'm going to add B so that um, we can actually see the item on the screen. Then I'm going to launch the the application. And I just want to see now that my layout kind of looks okay. It's not going to do anything, but it's got a button. If I click it, it does nothing, but there's a button there. The next thing I'm going to want is gonna, I'm going to want to be able to see the output. So that means I'm going to make a text view because that's used for just displaying random text, right? And uh, again, I'm gonna have to import it. And then I'm just gonna put uh, some placeholder text there. I don't really care what it is. And when I launch the thing again, uh, okay, I don't see it because and the eagle-eyed among you will probably have noticed this, I didn't add the text view to the layout, right? So when I said set content view L, what that did is it put the layout on the screen. So that's what's on the screen. And then I put the button in the layout so that the button's in the layout, which is on the screen, but I didn't put the text view onto the screen. Now I have, so, so that's all right. Okay, and that now that those preliminaries are done, I can try to actually solve the problem I need to solve. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I know I want to connect to the to the internet and I don't really want to code it myself because I'm lazy, remember that. So I'm going to look for a networking library that can help me. So I'm going to say, what's the best Android networking library? And I get some results and I go, okay, let's take a look. Um, and I see there's okay HTTP. So looking at it, I mean, it looks pretty cool. It's got, the code doesn't look insane. There's some examples of an asynchronous callback. I'll talk about that later. Retrofit 
Light, Ion, there's a whole bunch of options. And the thing is, it doesn't really matter what I use, right? All of these things can do the job. But I'm particularly interested in OKHTTP OK because it was the first result and um, I've actually heard of it before. I know that it's what Google uses in Google Play Music and I know that because when you click on the licenses in Google Play Music, you can see OKHTTP OK listed there. So that's pretty cool. If it's good enough for Google, it's, it's probably good enough for me. Um, okay, so then I need to know how to actually do a request. Okay, now these examples are not in Java. They're in a language called Kotlin, which is a, a supported way of doing Android coding, but not the one we're using. So I'm gonna ignore that. I'm gonna say, okay, HTTP, uh, maybe Android tutorial. Yeah, seems reasonable. And I'm gonna do that. I see there's an example here, an example here. I've used Vogella before and I kind of like it, so I'm going to go with that. Okay, then it says that if you want to use OKHTTP, OK you have to stick this dependency into your build.gradle. Okay, so I'll do that. Um, Android Studio, I've got my Gradle scripts, and in the Gradle file for the app, I'm going to stick in this nonsense. Say sync now. So you'll see what it's doing now is it's downloading OK HTTP. But I see it's downloading 2.5, so I wasn't, I may have jumped the gun there because um, I know that OK HTTP has a newer version. So, okay, let's just search for OK HTTP in general and we'll see that. On the page, there's a whole bunch of examples. And it's all pretty good. But I see that they've got a dependency on 4.6. Okay. If you're using the Android alternative, then don't worry too much about this because the OK HTTP libraries are already um, installed. Okay, so not a big deal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually change the the version that's in the build.gradle because it's that other one was just a little too old. And what it'll do is it'll download a whole pile of dependencies. This is one of the nice things about Gradle and if you're using the Android alternative, Maven. What they do is that when you say, okay, I'm using H OK HTTP, what they'll do is they'll go, okay, but if you're using OK HTTP, you also need these other five libraries because they're necessary for OK HTTP. And then they'll go and fetch those libraries for you, which is pretty great. Okay, so now I've got my uh, uh, library all set up and I'm going to figure out how to use it. Okay, so I mean, this looks pretty usable, I guess. There's um, there's some code here that looks like it might help. Um, and you can see that basically there's an OK HTTP client and I'll just, I, find, I just, I'm just copying the stuff from the page, right? I don't, I don't think about it too much. Um, paste it in there, hit Alt Enter a few times so that all of the stuff can get imported. Um, Okay, and then this is the URL I want to I want to get the uh, request to to go and download things from. Um, I can't actually remember what this was for your lab, 
so I'm just gonna make it uh, CNN.com because whatever and um, okay then there's some things underlined here so it says okay this is an unhandled exception I'm not allowed to leave this exception unchecked I have to add a catch clause so I just I just do it uh, whatever and then it says I can't return a response and that makes sense because this thing here I'm not in a method that returns something I'm just in the on create right so it doesn't return anything so all I'm going to do is I'm, I just want to print out the response body for now or maybe I should set it to be the contents of the of the text view so let's say t.setText to response.body.string okay that seems fine to me right everyone cool with that if not pause the video think about it a bit come back so I'm gonna I'm gonna launch it now and let's think about what happens now um, it's busy building this tends to take a while it's installing it launched now it says internet connected has stopped so then I say okay that's fine I will roll with the punches let me look at this thing called the log cat because that will show me what my errors are okay I'm gonna click on error and go and look for some error fundamentally I want to find an error that's that that I, I caused and um, that's not always straightforward as you can see um, partly that's because I was connected to my phone rather than the, um, rather than the emulator okay so now what it's going to do is going to tell me what the problems are okay so I see what's called a network on main thread exception I'm going what I have never heard of such a thing so I go okay network on main thread exception so you'll notice I, I'm like I don't I don't know anything I just kind of click on things and stuff works and like, hmm, that's good okay so let's see what is going on with network on so this guy got the same thing android.os.network on main thread exception and it says the exception is thrown when an application attempts to perform a networking operation on its main thread um, and there's a thing about read this blog post so I could read this entire blog post um, and in the past I think I have but basically what it's going to tell me is that Android doesn't like it when you do network requests on the same thread that the user interface is updated from okay that was quite cryptic but what it means is look Android wants the user to have a nice experience on the uh, on your app so what it says is the app should always respond to user input right now under what circumstances won't it respond well to user input it won't respond well if there's a process that takes really long and so the user can't for instance click on a button so let's say in your app you um, have some really intense calculation then what's going to happen is while the user is trying to click on a button the app just won't respond because it's it's too busy doing this intense calculation okay that's one reason another reason it could happen is because there's some it's waiting for something to happen right so when you're trying to do some request over the internet you don't know how long it's going to take when you say go to cnn.com you know maybe the user has a really fast phone and it doesn't take very long to get to cnn.com but possibly the user has a really slow phone and it takes forever right and when that request takes forever what that's going to do is it's gonna it's gonna stop the user from doing anything else because the app is too busy trying to get to the network okay so Android has this thing called network on main thread exception because what it's trying to avoid is your app freezing while it waits for network responses so that's the explanation but the question then is what do we do about it and um, what we're going to do about it is we're going to Google it um, and you know we're just going to say okay well let's look at look at what to do with OKHTTP 
and we can see that what people do is they say okay use the async method and uh, it's the same sort of thing except it will um, enqueue the response and then it'll it'll uh, return the result eventually but I see that that's something that um, they've got a they've got a better version here for um, okay HTTP 3 I don't even know if this is gonna work I don't I don't think I've ever tried this but let's try it um, and that means I need to go into Android studio and paste this thing um, yeah that wasn't particularly good hey I don't know where this post method comes from uh, can we do that can we say client.post nah okay so I didn't like that response because I didn't understand it. Ah, okay, and I see actually the problem was that they they created a function called post and I just kind of <laughs> ignored it. Um so I should actually put it in the code. Okay, that looks like it's a method and so it needs to go in the method portion of the thing. Okay, it tells me it doesn't know what JSON is. Uh, I don't... I saw that in the in the example code they had uh, this media type dot JSON thing, so I said okay, maybe that'll work. Um, and then it needs a reference to client. Client is local in on create, so I'm just going to make it global so that this thing can see it. And now that means I can call post, and I'm just going to post to cnn.com. Okay, we got our string response here, and so we're going to do exactly what we did initially, and we're going to set t's text to the response string. Okay, now we'll see that that makes an error. It says variable t needs to be final, and I'm going to just let let Android Studio make it final then. Okay. Um, then I'm going to run the thing and I wouldn't be surprised if I get more errors, but let's see what happens. I did get more, more errors. And the error says permission denied missing internet permission. Okay. As usual, I just say, I don't really need to know what that is. I just need to have Google. So I see that um, some stack overflow, permission denied, missing internet permission, and look for the response. So it might be due to missing a user's permission, Android name, um, uh, internet thing. So if that's not in your Android manifest, then you can't... Uh, you can't access the internet so I'll go look at the manifest and I'll stick in that permission relaunch okay it's still building so 
and I got another crash, which is just wonderful. Now, this is interesting. So it says only the original thread that created a view hierarchy can touch its views. Does that make any sense to you? Yeah, not to me either. So what do we do? <laughs> we stick it in the we stick it in the search request and we we click on it and we see what happens. Okay. So it says that the problem is that the only um, uh, thread that's allowed to update the user interface is the user interface thread. So remember we said that in order to stop the um, the program from freezing, we moved the network request into a different thread. Okay, so it wasn't running on the main thread, it's running on a different thread. But that means that this on response when it says t.setText, it's running it on a different thread. And according to this post, I'm not allowed to run anything on a different thread. Wait, have I explained what a thread is yet? No, okay. So a thread is basically just like a program that runs on your computer, right? So you may think of an Android app as one program, and it is. In that terminology, it's one program. But what you can do in order to make the program more efficient is you can split it into multiple concurrently running programs or threads, right? So basically what happens is it's kind of like, you know, when you have your computer, you can run Android Studio on one thread, you can run Firefox on another, so you're running lots of different programs. Now your app itself can run lots of different programs. One of the programs that it's running is the one that updates the user interface, the one that makes the app look like it does. When we did this call asynchronously, right, what that um, did is it made like a separate program to go and do the, the network request, okay? And that program, because it's not the program that did the user interface updates, it's not allowed to update the user interface. Only the original thread that created the user interface, so sort of this program, if you think about it, can update the user interface. This program can't. Okay, did that make a little more sense? I will update a video, I mean, I will upload a video purely on threading, um, but this is just a sort of basic idea of what, what threading does, it creates sort of two separate programs. And you can picture this as like, um, almost like having two people who respond to your requests. So let's say I needed to do two things. I needed to um, clear the board and I needed to get whiteboard markers. And I said to person A, go clean the board. And I said to person B, go get whiteboard markers. Okay. Then if I set a rule like Android has that only the person cleaning the board can write on it, then the person who fetched the whiteboard markers can't go and write on the board. And that's exactly what we're trying to do here. We've said this person is the guy that's cleaning the board and this person is the guy that's going to get the whiteboard markers. But then we told, but then we said this guy that went to fetch the whiteboard markers must write on the board. But the rule is only the guy who cleaned the board can write on it with whiteboard markers. Okay. So what we need to do then is we need to pass that task on to the person who cleaned the board. Okay, I don't know if that analogy helped, it was a bit convoluted, but basically the program that fetched the content is not allowed to put the content on the screen. So what it needs to do is pass it to the program that can. Okay, so uh, if we go back to this thing, you can see it's got this thing run on UI thread, new runnable, and then in the public void run, you can put stuff that updates the UI. So we're like, okay, whatever. Let's get this thing. And let's tell it to update the the text view. And it'll say that I need to make response to a final and I'll just do it. And I'll run the thing again. And now I've got the content from ZNN.com sitting in my app. Okay, 
Um, so you'll note I didn't follow the instructions that were on the Moodle page. And the reason I didn't do that is I wanted to show you guys how I would have approached it from scratch. Okay, so, you know, if, if nobody was giving me instructions and I was just sitting with Google and I'm going, I need to do something here and I'm not really sure how to do it, um, then, you know, this is a good way to to approach it is to just say, look, I'm going to try stuff. Whenever anything fails, I'll look in the log cat, which is where my errors show up, and then just Google what comes out. Okay. Now, um, I'm oversimplifying there because a lot of the reason I could quickly interpret what's going on in the log cat is just because of background knowledge that's um, accumulated over the years. But the point is you'll accumulate that knowledge, right? You'll accumulate it as you go along and eventually you'll be able to you'll be able to figure out what's going on with an error message pretty much immediately. Okay, so I wouldn't be too um, too worried about it. Now, the uh, thing I didn't do here is how to add parameters to the request. And I'm not really going to do that. You know that, you know, in your lab, um, in lab five, I think it is, you want to send a request, a, lo um, a parameter along with the request. Okay. What I mean by that is, let's say you are looking at like DuckDuckGo.com. Um, that just is the home page of DuckDuckGo, right? But if I want to actually see a query result, I could say question mark Q equals uh, help me or something. And um, then it'll give me a search for help me because I've passed this parameter called help me to the web service. Now in your lab, you have to pass the brand to your script that um, that handles searching for cars. So the uh, process you're gonna follow is exactly as before. You're just gonna Google or DuckDuckGo is the case maybe, um, how to send parameters, right? So with OKHTTP, okay, I know that I want to send request parameters. Um, and so I just do that and go, okay, looks like I got a request.builder and I stick stuff in there and, you know, whatever. You can see if okay, HTTP3, I can say I've got my builder and I can say add query parameter and set the name of the parameter and the value of the parameter. Okay. Um, I'm not going to do that, uh, but you can see I've got a builder here. And this thing is referring to a builder. And I've already got my builder, so I just need to add my query parameters. Okay. You know what? I'm just going to do it. So let's say I wanted to add a query parameter to this. Um, uh, where is this thing? To this thing here, I could say like uh, dot add header okay in this case i can add a header because it's a post um, request so i can add a header called like uh, maybe this one is called q and the value is um i can't even remember what i searched for oh help me and that'll mean there'll now be a header attached to that to that request i'm again oversimplifying what i've done here is a post request rather than a get request but yeah, you can Google any part of this that that was problematic or uh, feel free to use the forums. Um, what I have noticed about the forums, which is incredibly cool, is that you guys are fundamentally answering each other's questions. Now, you may have noticed at the top of the video I said um, I'm really lazy. So I really love the fact that you guys are answering each other's questions. I also love the fact that you guys are capable of answering each other's questions, which is, which is wonderful. Um, so yeah, anyway, that was the okay HTTP and kind of process um, video. I'll upload some more videos as we go along.